Hey fellows and welcome to why I use what I use. And today I want you to meet my Zoom F6. To be honest, my initial purchase decision was kind of tough for me. I wanted to get a Zoom H6. Reason being it's the standard field recorder here in India. it's used by uh, media productions news feature crews youtubers it's actually what you get the easiest from rental houses as well for your productions and so everyone knows how to use it it's very familiar a lot of my professional shoots involve hired crews so i plan to get the h6 because every sound assistant that i would ever hire you know in the future he would be familiar with it and know how to use and troubleshoot it save time and yet i finally ended up paying close to double what i was getting the h6 bundle for and got the f6 see this is in a comparison the h6 is a great device every news organization that i have worked with as a senior producer the zoom h6 was my cruise field recorder um it's super easy to use it has great features and it's really you know it gives really great output quality and honestly for that price king but i want to share my nine pros behind why i have been using and enjoying the f6 for over a year now so reason number 1 is its size and shape it's smaller than the h6 for sure and i really find the cube like shape easier to move and store around The H6 it comes in its own hard plastic briefcase I know that but the F6 it's really small enough to fit in the lens pockets or you know of my camera bag and that's how I actually carry it I have three camera kits and all I do is shift the H6 from one empty lens pocket to the other one so it doesn't add another bag for me to care and carry Reason number 2 it's the ergonomic benefits that come with you know how it's built I've had a Zoom H6 crack its screen after it was dropped on set once. It, it, it's actually very be- well built and I have been very fortunate to work with some of the um most careful crews, you know, people who talk to filming equipment as if they are their family. I mean, but it was just one of those, you know, off days, unlucky days. The F6 on the other hand is metal all around and it has impact points indented outwards as you can see. So even if it falls on a flat this surface the 1.54 inch full color lcd screen the six fader knobs up front the seven control and menu buttons up front or even the six xlr input ports they don't make physical contact i mean uneven surfaces and really unlucky days aside i think this build is kind of like insurance if you you know if you look at the bottom it comes with rubber padded rails so i absolutely love it how they have thought of protecting it from surface scratches on the bottom it 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 doesn't touch the ground it makes my ocd smile and in the retail box you also get this oh let's call this a crippled spider like camera mount which you can screw on top of the f6 so now you get two mounting points two mounting options a quarter inch female on the bottom and a quarter inch male on the top so this way it can actually sit on top of your camera and then you can attach your shotgun mic on top or any other permutation overthinking operational practicality also leads to genius redundancy which is point number 3 you can run this single field recorder of three different power sources and hot swap is possible let me show you you can unscrew the bottom plate by hand take this battery caddy out put in four double a batteries and when you now switch it on the battery icon in the display will read for battery and it will show you how much you know juice is left in them it is a good idea to go to the menu go to system go to settings go to power source and then tell the device what type of batteries you are using but if i turn it back you'll see a sony style npf battery plate and when i put a battery there you'll see the device switches to ext for external power and shows its remaining capacity 
And then if I bring in a power bank that provides a 5 volt output or any AC adapter, wall adapter for that matter, and plug it in the USB type C port on the left, you'll see that it will switch to USB and show the incoming voltage. And like I said, there is redundancy and hot swap possible. If I pull out the USB, it switches to external power automatically with no hitch to your recording, smooth, continuous. And if I pull that out as well, it will switch to the four AA batteries again automatically. So there's three levels of battery redundancy. On long shoot days, I put in a fresh set of four batteries first inside, but then I actually run it off one of those F970s. And honestly, one of these hasn't run out on me in a day yet. Reason number four was the time code capability of the X6. So this specifically works for me because one of my primary cameras is the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. That camera lets you jam in time codes. The Zoom F6 supports various time code modes as well. Like I'm showing you, you can actually jam external time codes into it as well if you want to sync multiple cameras. But it has free running time code of its own and it can actually use the real time clock which you can set in settings as a time code generator. You can actually even choose between um, dropped frame and you know non-dropped frames for different frame rates from the you know standard frame rate options that you get. All I have to do is just take a 3.5 mm to 3.5 mm cable, one end in the time code in uh, and jack, you know, on the right of the F6, and the other I jam into the 3.5 mm jack of the BMPCC 4K, and voila! Supporting cameras sync to the time code running in the F6. So now on my timeline, my edit timeline, I just select and click both of these clips, the video and the audio, go to auto sync, select time code as the option, and done! Reason number five is the sheer powerful modes and formats it lets you record in. You can go as high as up to 192 kilohertz and record in linear 16, 24 and 32 bit. 32 bit is very close to raw audio by the way and I'm going to talk about it in the absolute end. It's going to psych you. But if you go to file format options, you know, in the uh, recording menu, you also get a choice to record normal mono stereo, you know, mono stereo files, or you can choose poly files as well. Let me just show you what I mean. Uh, so when you have more than one inputs plugged in, in mono stereo mode, what will happen is it will create as many files per recordings as many inputs you have selected, you know, and enabled. But if I set this to poly, I just get one file. But <laughs> don't worry, it's not, you know, pre-mixed or whatnot. It automatically deconstructs into individual inputs as soon as I drag it into, you know, a timeline. Poly tracks, in fact, can be super helpful with file management. I mean, just imagine having six people wearing mics, let's say, and there are 21 takes. So that will be six by 21. 126 mono stereo files, but only 21 poly files. It's convenient. Reason number six is that it's also a sound interface for your PC. Just run a USB Type-C cable from it to your PC and the same cable will in fact, you know, power it as well. So you don't need external power. Go to menu, then go to system, then go to USB and you'll see options to use it as an audio interface. I mean, stereo mix for PC and Mac means that it will send out a mixed stereo signal of all the, you know, all the inputs that you've plugged in and, you know, it'll combine it. You'll have to set levels on the device and all that in the mix. But if you select multi-track in your DAW, DAW, you get the ability to record all inputs onto separate tracks, imagine. So you get absolute freedom to mix your inputs as you like in your you know, recorder. And since this is also a recorder, you can actually fiddle around with some settings and send signals to your PC, right? Recording in your DAW on your PC, whilst also recording 32-bit float files as backup on the device itself. And talking about DAW DAW, reason number seven. When you buy a Zoom F6, you get license codes for SE versions of Steinberg's Cubase and their WaveLab. I mean, Cubase is a really powerful digital audio workstation, DAW. So it has lots of effects and instruments, loops and samples and all that jazz. WaveLab is like a music sequencing software. In fact, the free license that you get with the device, you can actually use it to get further discount on upgrades to pro versions of both these softwares if you want.
honestly, I've got to come to reason number eight very quickly, which is sound quality. You're looking for it, right? People who have used any of Zoom's other recorders, don't worry, you're absolutely at home here. In fact, the F6 is much better than the uh, H1, the H2, the H4, and H5 and H6. The first thing you will notice, in fact, is that the F6 has a really low native noise floor because it has six pro-grade preamps. If you pair it with a really nice mic, you can get a really clean signal without much effort. It also has two AD converters, uh, analog to digital. So what you get is great dynamic range. The low volume end gets recorded without the noise floor. And you know, the noise floor doesn't bleed into it. Zoom, uh, they actually claim that the F6 equivalent input noise is minus 127 dBU. And even the loud end, it doesn't clip that easily. talking about dynamic range. Reason number nine, and this is the main reason why I bought it, it supports recording in 32-bit float audio format. It is literally the closest thing to recording raw audio. You know, when, you know, when you're recording in 32-bit float format, you don't need to set levels because your audio cannot be clipped. I'm not kidding. So I'm going to intentionally set fader to plus 60 decibel. Record a sample. And you can clearly see that the signal is pretty much red, which means clipped and destroyed, which is also confirmed by the waveform in audition. But here's the cool part. Just start pulling the levels down and all the data is still there. I cannot tell you how blown away I was when I first did this myself and honestly, since that day, I've stopped caring about these fader knobs. I mean, I turn them to switch them on, and but, but I never set levels per se. I'm not kidding. Here, I'm going to set the fader to minus 60 dB this time. Make sounds again and you can see there is no life in the levels. In fact, the clip and the waveform show nothing. But now if I start pulling it up, It's all there. It's just like when I moved to filming raw videos on my Blackmagic cameras. I physically can't go back to regular DSLRs. I am hooked for life to this 32-bit train. I don't care that 32-bit float audio clips are heavy to process. I don't care that they are large in size. I don't care that I had to buy XLR adapters for all my audio gear because the F6 only has XLR inputs, nothing else. I don't care that it doesn't have a native microphone accessory port built in, you know, just like the H6 has. So you always have to carry at least one mic if you want to use it. I don't care that it doesn't have a speaker for quick playback just to check your files. I don't care that the headphone out only supports TRS jack, so you need to have those headphones. I don't care that it doesn't come with any accessories like a bag or even a wall adapter. You have to buy them separately. I don't care that Zoom wants me to buy an additional Bluetooth accessory sort of adapter if you want to control the F6 with my iPhone from afar. I don't care that the memory card slot is forever hidden behind the external battery plate. I mean, I as it is use it in the SD card reader mode in USB settings to copy my files, so that way I'm happy. I don't care that its Indian pricing is so weird, is so messed up that the difference, you know, in price in certain stores is enough to buy you a Zoom H2N, imagine. I don't care that I've managed to list 10 cons against nine pros. The pros clearly outweigh the cons. It sounds very costly, but it pays back for itself by ensuring that setting audio levels is one less thing to worry about on set. I will put affiliate links to Zoom F6 in the description. Use them if you want EMI and all that from Amazon and whatnot. I will be paid some commission if you, you know, uh, decide to buy from there. And uh, my commission won't affect your price, uh, but if you want to buy it for 
सिग्निफिकेंटली लेस दो जस्ट ड्रॉप मी अ मेल एट शरत एट द वर्ल्ड ऑफ कूल डॉट कॉम आई विल आस्क अराउंड इन माई नेटवर्क ऑफ ब्रांड्स डीलर्स एंड स्टोर ओनर्स एंड हेल्प यू गेट द बेस्ट प्राइस इफ यू वॉन्ट ओन इट बट यू हैव टू बी अ फिजिकल स्टोर परचेज यू हैव टू गो एंड बाई इट इन आई दर डेली और मुंबई दैट्स वेर आई नो दीज पीपल एंड यू विल मोस्ट प्रॉब्लम हैव टू पे द इंटायर प्राइस अप फ्रंट आई मीन डोंट वरी इट बी अ लेजिट परचेज इट आई एंड आई वॉन्ट बी टेकिंग अ रूपी इन बिटवीन आई जस्ट हैव ग्रेट रिलेशन विद अ लॉट ऑफ ब्रांड्स एंड पीपल हु सेल फिल्मिंग गियर so please exploit me <laughs> plus i absolutely love the exhilaration of buying new gear which you guys will also have so see you guys in the next episode